All right, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to NetApp. Thanks for being here, uh, Mark. If you're passing by, we'd love to have you join us as well. We've got limited seating here, but we've got a very exciting presentation for you. We're very excited to have the uh, esteemed panel here, as I said, to discuss the uh, hot trends in HCI and how it's helping customers to simplify and automate to make the journey to a next generation data center. So here from Veeam, we have technical evangelist, Michael Cade. From Intel, we have Director HCI, Christine McMonagall. Here from Datalink, we have Chief Architect, Juan Orlandini, and I'm gonna step out of the way here because we have from NetApp, of course, our very own Gabe Chapman, Senior Manager, HCI GTM. And uh, here to moderate, once again, uh, we have uh, Cindy Goodell, and she is a Senior Product Marketing Manager for NetApp HCI. So thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you, panel. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So we're just going to go through and ask the panel a couple questions. Um, let's start. So um, are you seeing that the next generation data center is becoming a critical part of a strategic business more than just sort of like a nice to have? So Michael, do you want to start us off? Yeah, so I guess the next generation data center is, yeah, it's, 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 it's a thing now rather than just being spoken about. So. Um, everything that consists in that that whole next generation data center is available and and or, or nearly available and going to be can be consumed and I think that's the uh, it's the whole usability that simplicity bringing that and people are, are starting to forget about that siloed approach to their infrastructures be able to bring that that simplicity to it that modular approach and being able to um, yeah spend more time on different things to be able to better their, the, like, the process in, in front of the systems. Christine, do you want to add to that? Sure, yeah, I mean, modernizing your data center is, a, is an imperative, but there's a continuum of technologies as well when you think about cloud, data analytics, now the emergence of things like artificial intelligence. And as, as each of these new technologies emerges, they start as more of a nice to have as the early adopters experiment with them and try to figure out the value. But once that value has been demonstrated and more people adopt it, then it uh, can pretty quickly become an imperative to adopt it as well just to stay competitive with your peers. So, go ahead Juan. I was just going to agree with what you just said. The, the big differentiator is the ability to stay ahead of the game and be flexible and more nimble with your uh, uh, go-to-market strategy, regardless of what industry you're in. Uh, turning IT into a value proposition for the business rather than a cost center for the business. And that, that's really what we've seen as next generation data centers actually evolving customers' abilities to really consume IT uh, in a much more flexible way and a much more meaningful way for the business. Definitely agree there across all those points. I, what we're starting to see really is that transformation, the, the, the common innovator's dilemma, right? We have a product or a concept that comes to market and a lot of people are very, some people are very hesitant to start to adopt that technology in the very beginning. So we have those early adopters that grab onto things and ultimately they get a competitive advantage as they get further down the road when it becomes more mature and more, more approachable to everyone else. I always uh, counsel people to try to start to adopt or look at the more cutting edge or the more the newer technologies and, and start to get ahead of them well before they become mainstay because if you've done that, you've done that work, if you're making that transformation towards a next generation data center approach, you're way ahead of the curve and you have a competitive advantage. So it's to your benefit to really start to look at those technologies and evaluate them as they come about instead of waiting until they become mainstream. Christine, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, I was going to add on that that hyper-converged infrastructure is really a, a perfect example of this. When it first started emerging several years ago, people would experiment with it in a pocket of their data center like BDI or test dev environments. But now that the value of HCI has been proven, it's um, it's been shown that it can really be used for a really wide range of workloads, and that's how we see people adopting HCI today in their data centers. Yeah, and so to add to that, so the rest of you, how are you really seeing customers using HCI, what use cases, to sort of tra transition to the next uh, generation data center? 
So much to what you just said, we, we, we saw the transition happening about a couple of years ago where it went from a very pocketed, very siloed uh, solution for things like BDI to now we're starting to see full on uh, tier one or tier zero applications being run on uh, HCI environments. And, and that's on, across multiple data centers, single data centers, um, you name the workload we're seeing put on there. Yeah, I guess from my point of view, so coming from the vendor and availability market is, so we're seeing, again, exactly that. So people are putting more more workload, more critical workloads on onto this this hyper-converged um, infrastructure. And I, I guess the, the the benefit that they, them guys are getting is that that modular approach, that that scale out type type um, infrastructure, but also not having to have that capital expense on day one for five years or three, four, five years. They're actually able to buy what they need on day one for the next six to twelve months, and then they can scale up accordingly from a, a compute point of view or a storage. So. Yeah, being able to have that benefit means that you're not outlaying all of that upfront cost and, you, and you're getting what you need at the time. Yeah, and I would add to that that you know, the ability to manage your storage with your VMs and use the same familiar tools really provides a, a strong incentive from the way it makes efficient use of, of our precious IT people resources as well as um, you know, just a, a general efficient use of infrastructure in general. And when you look at how HCI's been advancing with each new generation of Intel Xeon platform, it just takes on more and more capabilities and becomes capable of running you know, more and more critical workloads and, and multiple workloads. And that regular cadence of additional capabilities makes HCI a very capable infrastructure that helps people advance to their next generation data center and then the next gen after that and the next gen after that. Exactly, what we're starting to see now is uh, after the first you know, five years of implementation of hyper-converged infrastructure, those first generation technologies address a specific set of needs, but they may not have known that some of the challenges that they were introducing were not something they could address immediately within their architectures. We're starting to see that pivot now as we're starting to separate compute and storage resources, but put them in the same familiar simple to deploy package and essentially turn HCI into that next generation or the second wave of a hyper-converged infrastructure technologies that allow us to address more sophisticated workloads, have better workload consolidation, provide more granular control at the virtual machine level, but also allow customers to scale resources at a level that is much smaller than they're normally accustomed to. No longer am I having to provision out an entire 2U unit of a solution in order to get that next level of scale. I can choose to independently scale just the storage resources or just the compute resources to address my workloads because we don't necessarily always scale those resources at the same time. So what we're seeing is kind of almost a pivot in the market away from the initial, initial first approach, which was targeted at a shared core, smaller footprint of entry, towards one that is more robust, more sophisticated to a certain level to address those tier one and tier zero workloads without having to make trade-offs or caveats. Couldn't agree with you anymore. The, the nice thing about everything that you just said is that the way that's actually being deployed in the field is through a very simple to use, very simple to scale uh, platform. And that's a key message about HCI is that, uh, the way I like to think about it, uh, the initial goes at is you had a box and then you have PhD right next to it. And what the manufacturers have done is bake the PhD into the box. Um, and as you're trying to deploy these, it becomes easier and easier because it's, uh, the PhD is actually in the solution. You don't have to have an expert at everything in order to deploy this stuff. Okay, so great. So what's, if a customer is looking at HCI's, what, what should they specifically be looking for? What are the, what are the requirements that they should be asking? Yeah, so I, I would say know what your infrastructure is doing today and really understand what it's doing. So from a change rate point of view, from a performance requirement, because then you can take that and you then understand what you need from day one. You understand what, what capabilities you need and that's the first starting point. And then after that, it's about knowing that change rate is the, is the big thing around understanding where you're going to be in six months, 12 months, 18 months, etc. So I think that's the first key of sizing it, like getting into the, the HCI or any infrastructure for that matter. But 
is the yeah, it's the hitting the easy button. I think is the is the key. Well, I, I would say if you're looking at the manufacturers themselves and the differentiations between them, is you should look at the entire ecosystem that those uh, the HCI vendors support. Uh, it could be in terms of integrations with data protection platforms. It could be d data protection factors that they have built into the platform, uh, replication, DR, all of those elements really matter quite a bit. Uh, you should also start seeing if they support non-traditional VMware workloads or, or things like OpenStack or one of those kinds of things. Because as you start maturing your, your data centers, it'll be important that you understand how to support all of those different kinds of workloads as well. It's also important to look for all flash configurations because as, once you start using HCI, you're going to find that you want to try other workloads on it as well. And by starting with an all flash configuration, you are going to be able to throw any workload at it that you want and know that it's going to be able to handle it. You don't have to go through a complex sizing exercise with HCI if you start with that all flash configuration. So I would urge you to you know, start doing a POC in any of area of your infrastructure where you feel it's most in need of modernization, whether that's due to capacity uh, requirements or cost pressures, you know, look for those areas and, and try it out. Yeah, I would agree with all the statements we just made. I think ultimately at the end of the day, hyper-converged infrastructure is an outcome. Start with the outcome you're looking to achieve and kind of work your way backwards. Does the, uh, does the solution you're looking at today, can it afford a rich level of SLAs to guarantee performance? Can it provide the ability to scale and mix and match resources based on what your needs are, not on an arbitrary set of restrictions? Does it have a deep level of integration with automation tools? Is it API driven? Can I get to that next generation data center where infrastructure is co code is kind of the route to market that I'm looking to deliver and I'm not doing everything the same way I used to 10, 15 years ago. Really the key here is to basically try to provide as much flexibility to the customer to address as many disparate workloads as possible and ensure that those workloads have the performance and characteristics that they need to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so Gabe, NetApp recently announced NetApp HCI and so we're demoing it here today. You just did a session on it. So how is it is NetApp HCI specifically addressing customer needs when it comes to hyper-converged infrastructure? Well, today what we've done is we've come out and you know we've announced the product in June and we're getting ready to launch it in October and we're here talking to you today about what we've built. What we've decided to do is take a look at how the original HCI products that came to market were, were designed and architected and put our own personal spin on it, right? So for us, we took the, the, the stance that we would not share compute core node core on each one of the nodes. We would just we would basically separate compute and storage from each other, give the customer the ability to scale those resources. By leveraging the intellectual property that was inside the solid fire acquisition, we're able to go there and provide a very granular level of performance scalability and SLAs around uh, storage characteristics. So I can take at a very large aggregate level and guarantee the performance for a specific set of volumes, or I can go down and leverage something like VVOL technology and protect an individual virtual machine from another. Therefore, we're able to take an all fast based solution and put a lot more utility into it by being able to scale more and more workloads. I can put my dev next to my test versus my production and not worry about those systems impacting each other. On top of that, we're giving customers the ability to automate as much of their infrastructure and simplify as much of this as possible. Package everything together, provision it for the customer, and provide those day one through 768 operational efficiencies in a common set of tool sets that they're already accustomed to, to working with on a day-to-day -day basis. If I'm a VM administrator, I shouldn't have to go to seven different consoles to manage something. I should be able to work in the platform and tools that I use on a daily basis. I should also be able to integrate with common tool sets around orchestration and automation like Puppet, Chef, or Ansible that I'm going to start to leverage as my infrastructure scales past that one or two node increment. We were very fortunate to get the very first uh, beta unit in the wild of HCI at Datalink, and uh, our testing was phenomenal on it. Uh, the setup was easy, which was actually one of the really cool things. Uh, standing it up, pushing it up, getting it up and running, having a vCenter deployed, and VMs running took us less than an hour. Uh, this was on a six node configuration, it was awesome. And for us, the big value for this is really the shared nothing storage architecture that this is built on. So uh, one of the big uh, selling points of SolidFire is that it's, been a, it's a mature storage platform. It's been around for a very, very long time. And if you look at the other HCI vendors, 
there's uh, a lot of the growing pains that they experienced was about them maturing their storage platform. And that's one thing that uh, if you look at the NetApp uh, HCI platform, that's already there. That's the simple part for them. So that's very exciting as they, uh, they continue to evolve the product that we're going to be able to rely on that storage platform to be there for us. Awesome. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us today.